Today I'd like to discuss sync in modern video production workflows. Timecode can save time and money in post-production, but did you know timecode alone is not enough to stay in sync? In most modern production workflows, audio and video are recorded separately. Anytime this is the case, they have to be aligned in post. But this starts in production, enabling the editor to do so. There are several ways to align audio and video in post. From simply using a slate to create a common mark point for audio and video, to using timecode metadata, recording timecode to an audio track, visually burning in timecode via something like a smart slate, or simply aligning audio waveforms. As the old saying goes, one is none and two is one. It's best to implement multiple forms in order to ensure that if one fails, there's always a backup. A common misconception is that timecode and sync are the same thing. This is actually not the case. Timecode is a metadata identifier for how the first frame is labeled in every clip. Sync comes from every device on set sharing the same clock source through the use of timecode, genlock, and word clock. Consider this scenario. You're on a shoot that requires long takes, such as capturing a live event or a reality TV show. There are multiple cameras, all fed hardwired timecode from the audio recorder. Now in post, you've aligned every clip's start point. But as you reach the end of the timeline, you notice that the clips have lost synchronization. How can this be? Because timecode is only metadata for how the first frame is labeled, once you hit record on any device, whether a camera or audio recorder, it relies on its own internal clock for timing from that point forward. Each clock has subtle differences, either being faster or slower than one another. These differences add up over the course of time, and it is experienced in the form of drift. By slaving each device to an external clock source, genlock on cameras, and word clock with audio recorders, drift can be eliminated. So what is timecode? Timecode is a clocking protocol developed by SEMPTI, or the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. It uses a series of square wave pulses representing bits carried over an analog audio signal to count in frames. While there are a few variations, linear timecode or LTC is what's most commonly used in production environments today. On file-based recording systems, when you hit record, in the metadata it stamps a timecode signature. Devices sharing matching timecode can be used to align files in post, saving time and money. So linear timecode has several extra bits that are not part of the clocking protocol, but are actually manually settable and form what is known as user bits. This is especially helpful for logging extra bits of metadata such as the roll number, the scene number, the date, or the camera letter. So what is Genlock? Genlock is an analog signal used for synchronizing video sources. Historically using Blackburst, with the advent of modern HD environments, tri-level sync became the standard. Often used from preventing artifacts and lowering latency in live broadcasts, Genlock also has applications in modern production workflows for eliminating camera drift. So where does word clock come in? Because audio recorders don't capture in frames, they have to be synced at the sample rate level. This is achieved through word clock. To ensure perfect sync, the word clock should come from the same master clock source as the gen lock and timecode come from. So frame rates are something that cause more confusion than they really should. The world is essentially divided into two regions, NTSC and PAL. Each is divided based on the country's AC power main frequency cycle. 60 hertz for NTSC, and 50 hertz for PAL. NTSC is generally speaking one of two frame rates, 29.97 or 23.976, whereas PAL uses 25 frames per second. Generally speaking, in NTSC regions, shoots destined for broadcast will be shot at 29.97 drop frame, whereas feature films shot digitally or videos destined for web are generally shot at 23.976. So you might be asking what drop frame is. Since Video can't be recorded in partial frames. There is a way of correcting the drift between real world time and video time by dropping frames in the counting process. There's no actual video frames lost, it's just how it's counted. Something that unfortunately causes more confusion is that frame rates are often incorrectly referred to as their whole integer. For example, 23.976 frames per second is often incorrectly referred to as 24 frames per second, and 29.97 is often incorrectly referred to as 30 frames per second. It should be noted that True24 is still used for analog film, and some high-end digital cinema cameras also can shoot in True24 as well. NTSC used to have a frame rate of 30 frames per second, but with the advent of color television, 
that frame rate had to be slowed down by 0.1% in order to prevent the color carrier signal from interfering with audio. So entry-level video cameras, DSLRs, and mirrorless cameras don't have dedicated timecode inputs. But that doesn't mean you can't still use timecode with them. Because of timecode's linear nature using square wave pulses, it can be recorded to an audio channel. Later in post-production, using software such as Tentacle Sync Studio or DaVinci Resolve, this timecode that was recorded to an audio channel can be decoded into metadata for the clip files. It should be noted, however, this is something that should only be done if requested or talked to with the editor prior. If you've never heard audio timecode before, it can be quite jar. Let's take a listen. It should also be noted that when timecode is recorded in place of reference audio, it can negatively impact workflows that rely on matching audio waveforms, such as using the software Pluralize. Music videos, commercials, and narrative productions often require music playback. And this is another scenario that can take advantage of timecode's benefits. To do this, all you have to do is sum the music down to a single mono channel, and the second channel of the stereo wave file gets replaced with audio timecode. The timecode is then wirelessly sent to a slate in read mode. This is used to burn into the video at the start of each clip. Make sure there's plenty of timecode pre-roll in order for the slate to get in and out prior to the music starting. I also additionally add beeps for cueing to help the musicians know when to come in. Last year, I did a commercial for the Ohio Lottery where timecode playback was part of the requested workflow. To accomplish this, I used audio software on my laptop to playback both music and timecode on respective channels one and two through an interface. Channel one fed to a PA system for cueing, and channel two fed to an audio transmitter with the receiver on the slate for timecode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and visit this video's companion article at henryrap.com. Link in the description.